Hey friend, in this tutorial, I've got mountains on my brain. We're about to do a little family escape to the mountains. Uh, so in this tutorial, I'm doing a very simple, basic snowy mountain landscape. So anybody can do this. We're not getting really detailed in all the ridges and edges of the mountain, but it still looks very beautiful. And even to some, it looks complex. So if you are ready to learn how to paint snowy capped mountains, let's dive in. Okay, so we're gonna be painting a very simple snowy mountain scape, scape. Um, I'm gonna start with an HB or 4B, whatever light pencil you have, and just lightly sketch in my mountain scape with three-ish peaks. So I'm gonna start small. So over here on the left is going to be further away, and then my focal mountain that's gonna be closest to the viewer, the viewer or us is going to be on this right side, taking up the most space and feeling more forward here. So I'm gonna have one mountain, maybe slightly taller mountain here. And then we've got our third mountain. And on this third mountain, I'm just gonna draw in, starting from the point of the triangle, the tip of the mountain, I'm gonna draw in a jagged line This edge right here is shadowed. So we're gonna have edges of each mountain that are shadowed, the right side. Basically what we're doing here is we are going to leave the left side on each mountain, the left side of each jagged line blank. That's gonna be our snow. We're gonna leave it untouched. It's white, so the paper is white, so it won't, we don't need to touch it. And then the right side is going to be a bluish gray and it's going to get gradually darker with each mountain to show that this mountain is closer uh, to the foreground than this one and then, then this one. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a darker mountain so you see what I'm doing. So let's pretend this is our mountain. We've got our peak here and then I'm just going to pull out a jagged line for where we're gonna have our shadow side and then our untouched, light, hitting, snowy side. So we're gonna have basically this side be in shadow. And maybe there's a couple other extra ridges down here too that are hitting darker shadows as we get closer to the viewer. So any mountain that's gonna be like over here, they're also gonna have a shadow side, but it's gonna be slightly lighter than this one as we get further and further away. Okay, so my shadow color is going to be like a dark blue gray. And like I said, it's gonna get darker or more opaque the closer I get to this mountain. So this color right here is going to be my shadow color for this mountain and I'm just going to gradually lighten it with each little ridge. So I'm gonna start with my lightest mountain. So I'm gonna grab some of this pigment in my mixing well, and then go to my uh, water cup and rinse off most of it. So it's just gonna be basically water with a just a slight hue of blue-gray. We're just gonna Paint in this really light shadow. And while this is wet, we can go up along the jagged line with darker color for a soft blend. And you might be wondering to yourself, well, how are you gonna see where the edge of the snowy side of the mountain is? That's where your sky is gonna go. So blend that. And we don't need to come all the way down with our shadow because we still have snow 
uh, that can be right here. So we can just do this jagged line on here as well, on the bottom of the mountain. And so let's get a little darker with this next shadow. And go along with my dark color first and then use water to blend it. keeping my bottom edge of the shadow really jagged as well. Trying to show ridges and where the shadow is. So if our sun is hitting the mountain here, then we're still gonna have some trailing off shadows. That's why we have this jagged line on the bottom. And then our final shadow side is gonna be the darkest. I still need to darken this one just a little bit though. So because this is still really wet underneath my darker color, I can help guide the darker color down to blend it. And now, I'm just going to add a touch of black to this mixture to make sure this next mountain is our darkest. Starting at the peak. Jagged bottom. Okay, so while we wait for our shadows to dry before painting in the sky to define the snowy side of our mountains, we're going to add some ridges and just little lips to the face of the mountain, each mountain, because it wouldn't be a smooth surface. So I'm just grabbing a really light version of this pigment, so mostly water, to add in some texture or shadow to the mountain. Maybe in certain areas I'll darken it.
And if you wanted to, you could do some pine trees, evergreen trees in the foreground right here. Some quickies. Just using black on my brush. trees. Okay, I'm going to use my size 16 brush and we are going to paint in a sky using a lot of water and a touch of cobalt blue for some bluebird sky. I'm going to start in the top left hand corner with a lot of water on my brush. I'm just going to leave a thin gap of paper showing for a little cloud at the top left hand corner. And then we're just gonna bring kind of in a arch motion. We're not going straight across to show some movement in the sky. We're gonna get lighter or more white as we get closer to the mountains to show a lot of contrast. And While the base layer is still wet, I'm just poking in some cobalt blue to create this soft, diffused, cloudy look.
I'm gonna add in some blush. So some Opera Rose with a touch of Lemon Yellow Deep. While this is all still wet, using clean water on my brush to blend all these areas together. There you go. There you have it. Time to shred some gnar on these snowy mountain tops. <laughs> um, shred the gnar is code for snowboard down some gnar pow pow. <laughs> I do snowboard, so that makes me cool. Anyway, um, I hope you had fun. Let me know if you struggled with any part of this painting or this tutorial. If you did struggle, keep going, keep doing it because the more you do it, the more you're going to develop that muscle memory for this type of painting. It can be challenging to see it at first, but you just got to think about shadow and shape of that shadow. So I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part was or what the most struggle part was. The most struggle part. The most difficult, difficult part. <laughs> um, and I'll see you in the next video.